in all honesty, I think the program was a bit disappointing. I come at you with another video today, and I come at you with a face that probably needs to be shaven. And this one's a, this one's a bit of an interesting one, because this is somebody I've covered briefly in the past, but more for kind of different reasons. It's about time I do a deep dive on this individual, especially considering I did receive a few conflicting comments on one of the videos that I did mention this individual in. Let's address the comments, let's actually do what needs to be done and deep dive on said individual being lean beef patty. But obviously, before we start, as I've already got your attention, you know what's occurring. Okay, so I set the challenge last last video with the 500 likes in 24 hours. I absolutely obliterated it. Absolutely slapped it. I think we hit 500 likes in three hours. Absolute madness. So thank you very much for that. I do really appreciate it. But we're going to progressively overload. Same rules apply, 24 hours. We're going to shoot for 600 likes in 24 hours if we can. And if we do hit that, that would be bloody splendid and I would really appreciate it. If you haven't already, which I know if you're watching this video, there's a high likelihood that you haven't, please do consider clicking the red button down below and subscribing to the channel and potentially tickle the bell next to it so you get notified when I upload every week, twice a week. The more people who get notified, the more people who are ready to pounce at the video means there's a higher likelihood that someone's going to be Austin to commenting first and that's what really matters here. End of the video, comment question of the week. If you have a question you want me to answer at the end of the next video, drop it down below for comment question of the week and I shall do so. I've taken too much of your time already. We we will crack on with the video and I know what you're thinking, Harry, we can't do so without the headpiece and the attire change. You're thinking, oh, base forgotten again. That was one time. I'm sorry. I still hate myself for it. I regret it. Please forgive me. But little do you know, I'm actually wearing half of the, uh, the attire right now. Boom. Boom. Oh yes. Which means, I know what you're thinking. Wow. Athletic. Iconic. Dangerous. I know, honestly, the same words came to my head when I first saw this as well. Honestly, it's like we're on the same page. It's like we get each other. Honestly, I love you guys. Always backing me. I'm backing you too. And I'm ready to run the London Marathon. That's a joke. I get tired of running down the stairs, let's be honest. Me, you, gym session. I'm backing. If you're free, I'm free. The way we're going to approach this is a few things. We're going to speak about three primary topics. Number one, this individual's TikTok, obviously Lean Beef Patty. Number two, one of her programs. Number three, her natural status, which was heavily questioned upon me releasing the video in which I claim that I believe she is a natural athlete. Have you heard about this new diet? I put this soda up, I put this soda up, and I jump them. Cause I don't I mean, care. A lot of her videos are very much surrounding debunking maybe fitness myths, or maybe even just giving a bit of a reality check, or maybe a bit of raw honesty surrounding the truth behind the industry, and maybe even occasionally some decent bodywork workouts, which I know she has produced before. I see this a lot. Obviously, being in the fitness industry, you're going to see a lot of things surrounding diets. Personally, I'm not a massive fan of diet culture. I never have been. It can promote a lot of unhealthy relationships with food and that's obviously not what you want and not what I'm trying to promote here. The best diet for you is one that you can remain most consistent with. You'll notice a lot of times when people like come to you and say oh this diet's amazing I've done it three times. Well, if the diet was amazing you would have only done it once sort of thing do you know what I mean? I'm not really about the whole I'm gonna follow this diet this diet this diet. I'm very much about eating for your own personal consistency. Realistically whatever diet you choose to follow has to align with your lifestyle. Not just in the gym but also when considering your social life and just your happiness in general. You've got to do what's best for you. If if you can't stick to it, it's probably not best for you. But no, I like this. I'm really digging these, these sweatbands for us. Like, if I was sweating right now, handy. Things I tell my younger self, fitness edition. Low cows, low fat, doesn't always eat better and healthy. Balance is important, gym, life, friends, socializing, two hours at gym. Yeah, basically, low calories and low fat also doesn't necessarily mean healthy. Fats and proteins are the only two macronutrients you actually need to survive. Fats play a, quite a vital role in bodily functions, be that hormone regulation and whatnot, so cutting out too much fat is actually quite a bad time. And again, low calorie doesn't necessarily mean it's right for you, especially if your calories are so low you feel horrendous. It's not really enhancing your life. In fact, it's actually hindering your life, and that's not what we want. Balance is important, gym, life, friends, socializing. I'm guilty of this, especially in the past. My life essentially revolved around fitness and eating and I had no balance. I'd say no to social events if I couldn't get my food in. I'd say no to events if it meant that I had to train at a different time. I missed quite a few of my like later teen years, like 18, 19, because I was so obsessed with training a lot, but not training very well and eating a lot, 
but also not actually eating enough. Whereas now I train better, I eat a lot more, I've found far more balance where I can actually see my friends but do this and this, which is partly why I like uh, flexible dieting. And I'm also making much better progress than I did back then. Fitness doesn't have to consume your life. You can focus on other aspects of your life as well. Two hours plus at the gym is a necessary. Same thing, I'm guilty of that. I used to train for three hours a day and I do like four exercises because I was lazy and stupid. Six to seven days a week doesn't equal better. Again, I back this. Rest days are extremely important. Extremely important. Let's say you go to the gym five days a week and you're hitting failure you're really training in an attempt to optimize hypertrophy so you're really pushing everything intensity is high whatever it may be you need rest periods you need a good day or two a week to recover if you don't recover you don't grow if you don't grow counterproductive no one will ever judge you as harshly as you judge yourself absolutely i think we are our worst critics and oftentimes when people do feel anxiety about going to the gym because they're worried about being judged you're probably judging yourself far more than anyone else is judging you most people in the gym not all people but most people are likely too self-absorbed and focus on what they're doing to even realize you're there no one is motivated all the time yeah fact if anyone says to you oh, i'm motivated to train 24 7 all the time they're probably lying no one is motivated all the time we have good days and we have bad days be that sometimes just low periods of motivation for no reason whatsoever or maybe even a bad mental health day that can really negatively impact your motivation it's okay to not want to do something and it's okay to lack the motivation and I, I won't say you have to keep showing up anyway but understand that showing up may actually help and enhance that motivation although it might be harder to get there I think once you do get there it might help you and you might feel a bit better for doing so I like these messages I think a lot of it's what people need to hear especially in this day and age and especially over what's been occurring in the last 18 months or so things I wish I knew when I first started working out Food's not your enemy, even if you're active, you need to eat. Yeah, 100%. I know it's hard, and for a lot of people, food can be deemed to be the enemy, but food is your fuel. If you had a car, you would put fuel in it to run it. You've got to kind of associate the same thing to, you, to your body. You have to fuel your engine if you want it to move. You have to fuel your body if you want it to do something and perform. I know a lot of people watching this may struggle with their relationship with food, but I can only imagine how difficult that must be for you. Over time, your relationship with food will hopefully get better, and you will start seeing food as not so much a reward, a treat or something to feel guilty about consuming, but more of a fuel and a necessary part of achieving what you want to achieve. Food is fuel and food has function. It is normal for your body to fluctuate daily, don't stress about it. Again, completely about this. Be that weight, appearance, whatever it may be, there are so many factors to consider that could influence fluctuation. Water retention, the potential time of the month, so hormonal changes perhaps. Food consumption, the amount of salt you consume, so many things. A pound of fat has about three and a half thousand calories. So if you've gained a pound overnight, unless you've been in a three and a half thousand calorie surplus, you probably haven't actually gained a pound of fat. You probably just gained a pound of water. Don't stress about these fluctuations. They're normal, they're part of life. I do understand that fluctuation of weight and, and or appearance can be quite disheartening. If it took you X amount of time to build a muscle, it'll take you X amount of time to lose it as well. It's a lengthy process both ways. Let's have a look at Lean Beef Patty's eight week program. Speaking of programs, did you know that in the description box down below, there's a link to a free program template that I created, the TFNL tier system, which helps you structure your own training depending on your goals and teaches you a lot of things that you may need to know about structuring what I deem to be an effective workout plan. So if you want it, click the first link in the description and download it for free because like I said, it's free. If you're eating calorie surplus, taking more calories than you're burning, you will gain weight. If you're thinking, no, that can't be right to eat a lot, I'm still not gaining weight, you're not eating enough. Fair point. Oh, again, I was guilty of this myself. Good stuff regarding the mental and physical damages surrounding being in a deficit for too long. Moderation is key. This is good stuff. Talks about the importance of macronutrients and how she splits it. She eats five to six times a day, three meals, three snacks. Don't have to do that. Eat however many times a day you need to eat to reach your goals. Yeah, this is interesting. We're saying how she doesn't believe that one rep group is better than the others. In fairness, it has been proven that you can grow in all rep ranges. The big myth used to be like, oh, hypertrophy is six to 12, strength is one to five, endurance is 15 plus, whatever, which means 13 and 14 have just completely been binned that they don't even exist anymore. But no, that's not true. You can grow in all rep ranges. The big key here is progressive overload. So doing more than you did the last session, be that heavier weight, more reps, whatever it may be. Interesting splits, which are going legs, rest, push, legs, accessories, rest, pull. I personally don't really like putting pull and hamstrings close to each other because you pull on the Sunday, legs on the Monday. I think if you're doing pull work, that may likely involve a lot of lower back stuff. Then if you're doing hamstrings and glutes, also a lot of lower back stuff as well. I'd probably try and move this around so there's a rest day between pull and legs personally. Let's have a go. So she's split into four exercises per day. We won't look at everything. We'll just have a look at the legs workout. So warm up, love that. I like a bit of warming up. It's very important. If you don't warm up, you're more likely to snap and we don't want to snap. Exercise one, light hamstring curls. I back this. I back 
back, starting your lower body stuff with an isolation to make sure the knee is moving well and the muscles are getting prepped for what's going to occur. Good exercise selection, I like that. Five sets of leg curls, five sets of hip thrusts, six sets of deadlifts provided you're doing both of these, which I think you are, and then four sets of RDLs. Again, I'd mix this up. I'd probably go deadlifts before the hip thrusts and then you can toy between whether you want the hip thrusts or the RDLs. I'd probably go deadlifts, hip thrusts, RDLs. It's a lot of volume. And the way I kind of split this is I'd maybe do two or three sets of lying hamstring curls to failure, probably around the like eight to 15 range, eight to 20 range. Then I go into deadlifts in which I probably do a five by five. Then I go into hip thrusts in which I maybe do one or two sets of six to 10. Then I drop it down for one set of 12 to 20. Like same thing RDLs, I probably do two sets of six to 10 and then maybe one set of like 12 to 20, probably nearer 15 to be honest. Push day, overhead dumbbell press, dumbbell chest fly, rope push downs. The volume is a bit excessive. Bench press I'd have first, then I'd probably go to overhead press, then I go to tricep dips, then I go to flies, then I go to push downs, then I go to push ups the most complex and the moving you're most likely going to lift the most on first being the bench press followed by next being obviously shoulder press and the dips getting the multi-joint movements out of the way first excluding the push-ups then followed by the isolation stuff the pecs being considered a primary muscle group so the fly comes before the push downs has triceps considered a secondary muscle group so that's pretty much how i'd structure that so she's obviously stating here in the disclaimer that she's not a doctor or even a pt so she's not qualified which is interesting i think a lot of her information is good i'm not taking that away from her but when pushing out programs and maybe even potentially charging for for programs like she's doing one-to-one -one coaching personal training we could check and stuff like that or that's what's coming soon i do feel like you should more than likely be qualified to do so i'm not saying qualifications equal knowledge it's more just like ticking the box of you've been trained to look after an individual in this way you look at it, you think wow phenomenal shape she looks amazing is she potentially tiktok's biggest fake natty who knows does she even claim Natty? I'm actually not sure about that. I covered this in the video and a lot of people disagreed with me, but my opinion hasn't changed. I believe she is most likely natural. Her level of muscle mass, her conditioning is naturally attainable, especially considering she likely has very good genetics. Does that mean you will achieve what she has achieved? Absolutely not. You will achieve, as I've said before, what you can achieve. We're all different. We all have our own genetic makeup. We have our own shape, structures. We gain stuff in certain areas first. We lose it in certain areas last. She looks fantastic but so do you. Just because you don't look the same doesn't make either one of you more or less fantastic than the other. You all look fantastic. Uh, despite the many comments disagreeing with me about her natural status, and I know more plates, more dates did a video covering her. Watched the video a few times, not once did he mention her natural status. I've not found her claim that she's not natural online or anything. Realistically, if she ever did do anything or even consider or maybe even was on something, it would most likely be something like Annabelle because it's what many deem to be quite a weak PD, which is why it's very common in bikini competitions and things along those lines. I think she's most likely natural, not enhanced, despite the disagreements in the comment section. That's a video. And these are my thoughts and opinions on Lean Beef Patty. I'm really impressed with her TikTok stuff. I think she's pushing out some good stuff. In all honesty, I think the program was a bit disappointing. I'm not saying the program isn't good. I'm just saying that I think I expected it to be better. Before we finish, we must crack on with comment question of the week. How did you navigate your entry into social media from a mental health perspective? Did you ever feel despair or frustration about lack of progress, lack of engagement, or any of the other nonsense that ravages the fitness space on social media these days. I think the thing I'm guilty of myself is when I produce a video that doesn't do particularly well, I feel like I've produced something that people don't like, and that makes me feel a bit like, not low, but I'm a bit like, oh, that's a, that's a shame. I, I really like this video, but it's a shame that it hasn't benefited as many people as, as I would have ho hoped. Obviously, I love seeing the TFNL channel grow. It's, it's so rewarding seeing the subscribers go up, the comments come in, and the views go up. I, I absolutely love it. Because as you know, I'd love to make a career from TFNL related things one day, and that's what I would love to pursue. So hopefully we will. I am a bit guilty of maybe paying a bit too much attention to the performance of videos. Not so much I've like necessarily just let myself down, but I feel like in many cases I've almost like let you guys down by producing something that maybe wasn't as useful or entertaining. But luckily I've got my friends like Austin, Sarah, Melissa, and the rest of the TFNL mods regularly reminding me that remember where TFNL was seven or eight months ago versus how it how it's doing now. The whole process of TFNL growing and the community growing and seeing so many like-minded people join me on this journey has genuinely enhanced my life far more than I think you'll ever realize. So to that, I do owe you a massive thank you. You genuinely have made my life a lot better. You genuinely have given me a new sense and a much needed sense of purpose. But yeah, that is it. That is the video. As I said earlier, if you like the video, then please let me know you like the video by liking the video. 600 likes in the first 24 hours is the goal. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel by clicking the red button down below and maybe even tickling the bell next to it so you get notified when I upload twice a week, every Monday and Thursday. And if you have a question you want me to answer at the end of the next video, drop it down below for comment question of the week and I shall do so. Thank you for tolerating my newfound 
athletic attire. Thank you for tolerating my opinion and thank you for tolerating the video.